What happened to the Australia of yesteryear? The Australia that was hopeful, and the Australia that was proud. What happened to the Australia that in 1988 assembled uh, a group of entertainers of different backgrounds to make it great in 88 and to have a celebration of the nation in relation to Australia's bicentenary. Now, as a 13-year-old Aussie boy who lived and breathed sport, whose heroes were the rough-and-tumble characters of the Norwood Football Club like legend Gary McIntosh and cricketing great DK Lilly, I knew I was living in the greatest country in the world. I was proud. I was proud of our history and I was hopeful for the future. But sadly, that's no longer the experience of Aussie kids today, as it's hard to find sporting heroes that actually stick to their lane, playing their sport. Today, kids get lectures about climate change and diversity and other such issues from their sports stars. Today, they get Pride Month and one, albeit contested, Australia Day. And it's not much better for the adults. They get a Labor government with a penchant for distraction and scoring cheap political points rather than addressing the cost of living crisis and the degradation of our culture. And this is the same Labor government, by the way, that spent around about $300 million on the failed voice to parliament referendum, which really represents what would be almost the most expensive indulgence in virtue signalling and identity politics in our nation's history. This is why Australians are feeling less optimistic about the future and previous generations. For younger Australians, the prospect of owning their own home seems dim as interest rates, rent, grocery prices and fuel prices increase, but it's more than just simply an economic malaise that Australians are enduring. For a start, many young students are being indoctrinated by activist-led education system into believing that climate change is going to incinerate the earth in the next 20 years unless something drastic is being done right now. And we often hear about the youth mental health crisis in this country, and frankly, if I were a younger person, which I'm not, I'd be depressed as well if the adults that I'm supposed to trust uh, such as school teachers, were constantly telling me the world was going to end soon. The public schooling <laughs> system is now so preoccupied with ensuring that children adopt subversive progressive ideology, whether it be sowing gender confusion or seeking to make children ashamed of their heritage, this cultural self-loathing is fuelled by the factors that I've just described. Australians are worried about the trajectory of gender ideology. And why such a thing is being actively promoted in government-funded institutions such as hospitals and schools and the University of Adelaide, who I recently discovered have uh, female uh, sanitation bins in the male toilets. They're worried about the prospect of more coercive restrictions and policies like they experienced during COVID, whether uh, it's another virus like disease X or something as ludicrous as the climate hysteria. They're worried about central bank digital currencies and the erasure of cash from our society, making participating in your economy a privilege and not a right. And they're worried about the increasing influence of those who have claimed you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. And indeed, at the recent globalist talk fest in Davos, one of the anointed speakers did actually say, and I quote, there is no realistic solution to the climate transition that does not involve a globally coordinated system of carbon taxes. Uh, those opposite, I'm looking at you. But it's not all doom and gloom. There is reason to be hopeful because people are starting to wake up to the narrative of the globalist left, and they're doing it by the thousands. And those who call out the absurdity of the net zero utopia or the horrendous damage inflicted on vulnerable young people by gender ideologues who are they are actually rewarded by the gratitude of the quiet Australians. The rise of what is pejoratively called populism throughout the Western world and the pushback against wokeness is evidence that this global trend is coming to an end, and that's a good thing, not a bad thing, Senator Pratt.